Greetings, and welcome to Xenos Analysis. I am Colonel Ichabod Rhombus, and today we are looking at that which goes largely unseen, the chameleonic assassin and scout known as the Tyranid Lictor. The Lictor is roughly equivalent in size to a Tyranid warrior, but is considerably more slender of limb and frame. Weighing in at around a ton, it was first encountered on Miral Prime, and it is perhaps a testament to the efficiency of this predator that it has remained largely unchanged since it was first introduced to this galaxy. The Tyranid race can largely be defined by their swarming tactics. Weight of numbers is their true power of this grotesque Xenos species, to overrun and overwhelm with the Horde. However, the Lictor is the antithesis of this purpose, for it operates alone, patiently, deep in enemy territory, and where the swarm is a battle axe to hack and smash entire planets, the Lictor is a scalpel to eradicate individuals. The Tyranid High Fleet charges without thought or mercy. The Lictor lurks unseen, waiting and calculating in order to execute its dread purpose. The anatomy of the Lictor is designed solely to facilitate its task as a stealth killer, reconnaissance runner and intelligence harvester. It has chromatic microscales and these form a chameleonic skin that changes colour so that it can merge with its surroundings and there are also subtle ranks of muscles in this skin that alter the very mantle of their flesh to mimic patterns and even textures. Together they render this aberration virtually invisible. A bladder of ultra-powerful nutrients is kept to allow the creature to ensconce itself in hiding and remain motionless for days, weeks, perhaps even months, and maintain optimal performance for when the time comes to act and strike. Vibration absorbing hairs stifle sound, permitting near silent movement. Its chitin plates are also thermal dampeners and help render the beast silent by further reducing air disturbances as it moves. Body heat is also suppressed, and even its skull serves to disguise the electromagnetic pulses of its brainwaves and make the horror impervious to non-visual forms of detection. Its torso also sports an array of flesh hooks. These razor-edged barbs are borne atop long tentacles of sinew that are fired outward by potent muscular contractions, allowing the fell creature to deploy these organic grappling hooks to scale even the most sheer of surfaces without effort. The Lictor has arrays of highly sensitive sensory appendages, permitting it to sift through scent, sight and taste to pick up even the most minuscule clue as to its prey, allowing it to stalk and track with astonishing accuracy. All of these enhancements serve to keep the Lictor swift, undetected and invisible until it is ready to act, and it is then that its formidable bioweapons are brought to bear. The Lictor is armed with rending claws and a pair of massive mantis-like appendages that can punch through armour and gouge through flesh. But while it is equipped for the extinguishing of life with ghastly alacrity, its true weapon is infinitely more dangerous. Instead of a maw, it sports a bushel of slender tendrils that are animate and possessed of a terrible capacity to drill through flesh and bone and burrow into living brains. As the lictor empties the cranial vault, it not only consumes the organic matter, but also consumes the neurons and neural transmitters therein, in effect harvesting the actual memory of the target. This gives the Lictor a near unique ability in the arsenal of the hive mind. It can accomplish in seconds what might well take weeks of interrogation and torture, and can acquire the knowledge of the target with perfect accuracy and unmitigated truth. Troop numbers, capacity, weapons, tactics, orders, intentions, concerns, backup plans, all are extracted and shared with the hive mind. Armed with such vital intelligence, 
A single Lictor can prove more effective than a thousand Hive Tyrants, because it allows the Swarm to insert even the most trivial force into the point of absolute weakness and at the most effective instant. The Lictor can also exude a potent pheromone that forms a trail, attracting and drawing in other Tyranids, whipping them up into a frenzy, so that it seems the Tyranid forces explode out of nowhere in the midst of the foe, after having been drawn in by this trail. This also means that even in the remote scenario that the Lictor is detected and killed, the fate of the target may already be sealed, because the pheromones may already be bringing in hordes of frenzied Tyranid. The Lictor has also benefited from the Atarius evolution. Like so many other bioforms, the lessons learned in a war of attrition with the Orc has resulted in them becoming quicker, stronger, more durable, with hardened chitinous armor plates, and their reflexes have been heightened to a degree that has near doubled their previous capacities in combat, turning what was already an effective ambush predator into a lethal assassination tool. As I stated at the start of this lecture, the Lictor has remained unchanged since its inception. However, there has been a single unique variant that was deployed in a very specific circumstance. Engineered by High Fleet Leviathan, this Lictor was designed not to destroy its target's body, but rather to smash its target's very mind. On the missionary world of St. Caspelan, Cardinal Salem was the spiritual beacon of strength and defiance, an exemplary leader from his cathedral bunker, his every word emboldened the Imperial Guard, and under such guidance, the approaching High Fleet would suffer almost assured defeat. An ordinary Lictor might well have succeeded in removing the Cardinal, but perhaps fearing they would martyr him and embolden Imperial resistance, the Hive Mind instead crafted a new form of Lictor for a new form of warfare psychological. For ten days, this new bioform would penetrate the Cardinal's defences every night. Sentries would feel the unmistakable sense of dread as the beast moved unseen amongst them, and anxiety and paranoia became rife in their ranks, and then, at the height of their fear, the screaming would begin. Without fail, the creature that came to be known as a Death Leaper would tear apart the Cardinal's closest advisers and guards before his very eyes, showering him with blood and torn viscera. No matter what he did, no matter where he ensconced his seat of power, or how much he bolstered his guards or enhanced his defences, each night the abomination would emerge from the shadows to orchestrate grotesque carnage on those close to the Cardinal. And as he stood, Drenched in the gore of his people, the beast would loom over him, claws dripping with blood and entwined with rent gobs of meat. It would then rear to strike, and then suddenly it vanished, melting away into the ether. After ten days of this living nightmare, coupled with sleep deprivation, mortal jeopardy, and grievous personal losses, the Cardinal's sanity was shattered and as a shell of his former glory, his catastrophic fall drained the entire planetary defense force of courage. When finally the shadow in the warp began to touch the planet, it further demoralized the human population, and when the High Fleet Leviathan finally made planetfall, the battle could only be described as a complete rout and a total and unmitigated slaughter. While we have no further record of the Death Leaper bioform being employed by Leviathan, or indeed any other Hive fleet, it has been theorized that it may well be in regular use by the Hive Mind. Due to its unprecedented stealth abilities and the harvesting of perfect intelligence, welds that have fallen to the Tyranid may well have fallen because of the actions of a Death Leaper. Only no witness survived to confess it, because no living thing escaped. The Lictor is the invisible lethal stiletto of the Hive Fleet, 
It's every cell designed for camouflage, tracking, and the kill. But fear of the unseen is no excuse to give anything other than your all for the Imperium of Man. Stand firm, stay vigilant, and trust in the protection of the God Emperor, beloved by all.